numerous studies revealing some really startling information about the prolific presence of pharmaceuticals in our water. Cocktails of drugs found in our fish that could wind up on your plate. The growing problem of pharma fish is tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. Nearly 70% of Americans take at least one prescription drug. But for the average bonefish in Biscayne Bay, that number is seven. Psychoactive drugs like antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, we're talking about heart medications like beta blockers, even medications that are prescribed to manage um, prostate issues. Because what goes in must come out. We take a lot of these drugs and our body doesn't use all of it and the end of the pipe is always here, this game bay. FIU researcher Nick Castillo is on the team that spent three years studying bonefish and pharmaceuticals. And we tested 136 bonefish throughout the Caribbean and 93 from Florida. Every single fish had at least one. Our average was seven, and it was all the way up to even a fish in Biscayne Bay had 17 different drugs in it. The research was sponsored by the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust in 2019 after some of the Florida fish that were being studied in tanks began to act weird. Paranoia, skittishness, twitchiness, it was very fearful. Alarm bells began to sound. After all, the trust was founded in 1997 at a time when numbers of bonefish were dangerously low. We were really concerned about their population um, in the late 90s and to the 2010s, and we saw a dramatic decline in their population. Representing a potential big loss to the environment and the economy. We've done economic studies and the conglomerate of bonefish permit and tarpon in the Florida Keys and Biscayne Bay generate just under a half a billion dollars a year in economic impact. With so much riding on this research, I joined the team on Biscayne Bay for some bone fishing to collect new data. Ross, I got uh, maybe fish in this white sand. I just saw a flash of silver. In no time, we got a bite. Got it. Reeled this beauty in, carefully took some blood samples, Thank you for participating. then released it back into the bay. And based on your research, what do you expect this results to say? I would expect it to affirm what we've already found, which is that we're going to find multiple drugs in these fish. This past April, FIU followed up with another study that focused on redfish on the west coast of Florida. And they did have fewer pharmaceuticals on average. It was uh, about two to three was the uh, average number in a redfish. But even with lower numbers, the results are still worrisome. Well, they're taking drugs that they don't have a prescription for. They have no choice, but they're being exposed. and. Unfortunately, it changes really important behaviors for survival. But what about the impact to us who eat the fish? Castillo says you need to consume about 48,000 redfish fillets to directly feel the effects of these pharmaceuticals. So these are really low doses, but it's a constant exposure. So from fish, but your drinking water, your produce, there's so many different routes that we're being exposed. And the question is, what happens over your entire lifetime? Right now, Miami-Dade wastewater treatment uses a biological unit process called activated sludge, proven to break down some drugs, but not all. Like Tylenol is very well removed, but we do find it, which is telling us that there is either untreated water that's entering our bay or septic systems that are uh, leaching out into the bay. We can't go out and clean and filter and remove it once it's here. It's really making sure it's not introduced with wastewater treatment. And as for how drugged up the fish we caught on this trip were, lab results won't be in for a few months. Still, there was one big positive takeaway. We were excited to see small ones, tiny ones. That's telling us that these fish that have disappeared in the last 20 years, now we're getting an influx every single year of small fish. So that's telling us something's happening that's great. It shows how resilient our fisheries can be and our ecosystems can be. In the short term, we, we have fish again, and it's optimism. Awesome. Uh, nicely done, sir. <laughs> Bonefish and uh, Tarpon Trust has used the data from both studies to support the need for an innovative wastewater technology grant program. That legislation was funded this year, $2.5 million. It's also very important to never, ever flush your medications. There are sites all across South Florida where you can safely dispose of old or unused prescriptions. We have those locations as well as more information on Connect to Protect on Local10.com to connect your septic tanks to sewer lines. Very, very important. Just scan that QR code there on your screen. It'll take you straight to the Don't Trash Our Treasure section. We're going to continue this conversation because it's so important. It's just another indication that our wastewater, our waste is winding up in our waterways. In the water, yeah. Yeah, and it's having a fish. big impact. Pharma fish. I never Pharma heard of it. Pharma fish, yeah. So interesting. Mm. All right, and, and something to think about every time. 100%. Okay.